Hey, Bobcat Nation, it's time for another Bobcat Coaches Corner. First one of the fall season with head golf coach Jimmy Wilson. Jimmy, thanks for joining us, buddy. You're very welcome, Al. My pleasure. <laughs> Appreciate having you here to talk about the teams. And folks, don't worry about adjusting your television sets. That is a, a bit of a glare coming off the big dome there, Jimmy Wilson. So we just had a great, uh, a, a solid finish at, at this tournament this past weekend. Uh, you know, tell me a little bit about this Kiowa Island Invitational and, and the field and and what you thought about that sixth place finish? Um, you know, first term of the year, 17 teams there. We finished sixth. Obviously, we'd like to have done better. Um, we've graduated four All-Americans in the last two years, so we're sort of searching for a lineup this year. Um, no seniors. Played two juniors, um, two sophomores, and a freshman this past week. You know, again, would we like to do them better? Sure. The weather, the wind was a little bit tough. We showed a little bit of frustration coming down the stretch the second day with the wind. Um, saw a lot of positives, but we've got a ways to go. All right, well, well, talk to me about the guys that you do have coming back, because the Bobcat fans are used to seeing the names of uh, Joe Young and Billy Sheeta up at the top of that lineup, and, and now they're going to be replaced by uh, an all-conference guy in, in Pat Garrett. What does it mean to have uh, a guy like him coming back with some pretty solid experience? Well, Pat busted on the scene last year. His freshman year here didn't play a whole lot. Um, last year he won a tournament as an individual down at Valdosta State. Made all-conference, as you said. We've got Gavin Harper, second-team all-conference last year as a freshman. Um, Taylor Smith has played a lot of golf for us. So we're sort of looking for those three guys to, I guess, step up and be the, the leaders of the bunch. Um, we've got some young guys that have had some experience, not a whole lot of experience, but they're capable of playing. We're going to be okay. We just have to grow up a little bit. Yeah, and, and with you know so much uh, new element to, to that start in five, you you got to try and plug in different guys. Uh, it, qualifying is typically the way that you, you make that that lineup in in the in the preseason, and that's what you used for this first tournament here. Correct? Was was you went by the numbers, right? Yeah, when we have our first meeting in the fall, I explained to them we're going to go by the numbers for the first tournament, and then I'm going to shuffle the lineup around a little bit through the rest of the fall, trying to find five guys that I know I can, um, you know, compete with in the spring. Um, so you'll probably see ten or eleven different names this fall in the lineup. And, you know, so that's going to help you when it comes championship season up there in the spring as far as making that run for the, for the Peach Belt tournament. So the fall, while, while you want to win tournaments, uh, you're, you're more or less just trying to figure out which five, five guys are going to have it for you? More or less. Um, you know, in the last few years we've had our top five, six, or seven set going into the season, so it wasn't a whole lot of juggling the lineup. Um, this year I can see us playing as many as 10 or 11 kids this fall. Okay. Well, let's look forward. We got uh, ne next week the big uh, Spring Hill Suites Intercollegiate. Gosh, you've been doing in this tournament. I mean, uh, longer than I've been here, at least I know. Uh, how long has that relationship been? I mean, is it something that you've you've had for a while up there at Francis Mary? Probably been playing in it for a dozen years or so. Nice. Um, it's a Division One tournament. We're one of two Division Two schools that get to play in it. We play in it along with USC Aiken. Um, last year, we were fortunate enough to win it. Um, by about nine shots. Again, we got a, a new cast and new crew, and we're going to go up there this weekend and see you know, see how we compete against the Division One competition. Now, what's the purpose of, of taking on guys at that extra level? I mean, you don't have to compete against them when it comes championship time. Uh, what what uh, goals are you hoping to set there? Well, it's my belief that to be the best, you've got to beat the best, and to compete up against Division One can do nothing but help us. Um, you know, last year, again, we won the tournament, and it gave the guys a great bit of confidence moving forward. Sure. Um, we won the tournament without Joe Young last year, who was out with elbow surgery in the fall. <laughs> Billy Sheeta finished second. Um, but, again, those guys aren't with us this year, so we've got to find somebody new to step up and take the lead, if you will. Well, that's a big tournament for you. We're looking forward to some, some solid finishes there. And uh, have, you, have you worked on, on forming the, the five that you're going to be taking up to, to Florence yet, or, or aren't we that far along? I've got a good idea. Um, I haven't let the kids yet know it yet, so okay, we'll let that I'm not be let that not, cat out of the bag. No, we don't want to get you in any trouble with the guys. All right, so uh, let, let's look at just coaching golf in general. I mean, it's a unique sport in, in that uh, you know it's not like basketball where if, if somebody doesn't have it on a particular day, you can't grab somebody off the bench and, and plug them in there. 
Um, so, I mean, how do you go about coaching a sport where, you know, you really can't make changes? Well, during a tournament, I feel like you're not necessarily coaching golf, you're coaching people. Um, you figure out what works with each individual player and you, you talk to them. You know, I may talk to you differently than I would say sure. Wendell, our athletic director, if we're on the golf course. Um, you know, some guys you pat them on the back and some guys you're going to fuss at a little bit. It's just, you know, learning how to push their buttons and what's going to make them work. So it might be a bit of a learning curve for you as well with all the new faces is trying to figure out, you know, uh, how a Victor Monte is going to respond uh, as opposed to uh, a Brian Fox. Oh, without a doubt. Um, two very different personalities and, again, they react differently to the way you deal with them. Sure, sure. Okay. All right. Well, uh, you know, we're looking forward to, to helping you find out, uh, you know, where this team's going to head. And I'm, I'm sure with all the experience that you've got, you're going to get that best five when it comes time for the spring and be battling for championships once again, right? That's the goal. We're, anyway. we're going to do our best to get there. How about that? <laughs> okay. Well, for Jimmy Wilson, I'm Al West, and it's another Bobcat Coach's Corner. Uh, stick around for some more, folks. We'll be right back. I heard someone ask the other day, how did that law ever pass? But they never even contacted their legislator. My teacher says legislators are concerned about what people think and want to hear everyone's opinion. Even mine, I can't even vote yet. People ask, where's my voice? To me, it's easy. You can call, write, or email your elected officials anytime and let them know how you feel about an issue. Am I missing something? Learn how you can make your voice heard by logging on to representativedemocracy.org. Bobcat Nation, it's time for another Bobcat Coach's Corner. And it's the first one of the fall season with head soccer coach Hope Clark. Hope, thanks for joining us to talk a little bit about the teams. Thanks, Al. Thanks for having me. Quite possibly the best looking panel that we'll have in the <laughs> fall. Uh, I'm sure Coach Barsby will have something to say about that when he comes in here a little bit later today. But, uh, you know, I'll leave that up to the audience to judge on that one. Uh, we're already a week into the season. You got everything figured out now, and, and we're ready to play the, the conference tournament, right? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, two games under the belt. I uh, started, unfortunately, with a loss, but, I th you know, I think a solid loss because you're playing the number eight team in the country in, in Lenore Rhine, and, and you only lost two to one. Yeah. Uh, a lot of fireworks in the first half. You know, uh, Tell me a little bit about that game. Did you make some halftime adjustments that, that really apparently worked for you defensively, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we've been toying around with a lot of different uh, systems of play, and uh, we want to have the the av availability, excuse me, to uh, to switch those systems if need be. So sure. the girls have been trying out about three different ones. Uh, we started in a 4-4-2 uh, against them, and Lenore Ryan is a very experienced and uh, veteran team coming off the national tournament, mm -hmm. and they had uh, exquisite movement off the ball, and it got us running a lot. And I think we were just a bit panicked, you know, we're a young program and or should say young team, and uh, those girls were kind of running scared a little bit in the first half, but we had some nice looks early in that first half, and I think if we'd capitalized, it would have been, girls maybe would have settled in a bit, but, uh, sure. you know, we kept fighting throughout the first half, and it ended up 2-1 uh, going into halftime, and we scored late there, so a lot of momentum going into that second right, half. Right. Uh, we changed some things tactically, and sure enough, you know, we kept possession uh, the majority of that second half, had another couple good looks, uh, but Lenore Ryan is a very solid team, well coached, and uh, very good movement off the ball. Uh, probably a, another trip to the NCAA tournament for them. I mean, they, they brought a lot back. I absolutely, know. absolutely. Cool. All right, well, a couple of days later, you got your first win of the season and got that out of the way against yeah. uh, Southern Indiana. And, and I know, uh, talking in our own personal conversation, you think that they have one of the top goalkeepers in the country. A one nothing victory for you. And, and, you know, how did you feel coming out of that one? 
Uh, fantastic, actually. I think I've never seen a team fight so hard as these girls did, and uh, they brought a lot on that second day. I think early in the season, uh, to play two games in three days is pretty difficult fitness-wise. Um, our girls weren't even breathing heavy at halftime, and it's part of my coaching philosophy and playing philosophy. Uh, you know, I refuse to lose a game to fitness, and uh, <laughs> our girls are uh, well prepared for that. So I think for us, we had the leg up, the, you know, the ability to run two games in three days and uh, play with some fire was good. And uh, the girls' confidence just kept rising and rising because we had a lot of good looks at the goal um, early on. And uh, going back and watching the game film, I mean, the goalkeeper had to make some brilliant saves. So. Uh, they were actually quality shots, and I think uh, we kept possession well, and our movement off the ball was much better. So uh, still a couple of things. You know, we had some breakdowns. They almost scored there at the last, uh, you know, 10 seconds of the game, and, uh, you know, just some poor marking defensively on some set pieces. So uh, just trying to tweak a little bit of that right now and get us prepared for the upcoming games. And for the Bobcat fans, as far as the, uh, the numbers, uh, the first goal of the season was goaled by, uh, by Taylor Yee right before halftime, Absolutely. as she mentioned, against Lenore Ryan. That second goal was the first goal of the career of, of Kessler Matheson and Absolutely. perhaps some more to, to follow. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Uh, <laughs> you know, she came in, I think, uh, I actually did not recruit her. That was from the previous coaching staff, and she was uh, recruited as a defender. And, um, you know, Kessler came in. She's a very skilled player, very fast, quick. Um, she's tactically very bright, but at our level, just too small for to play in the back line right oh, now. Okay. So uh, I had some ideas um, once I kind of got here and said, you know, we'll probably look at her as an outside mid or up top. Um, her ability with her left foot is, is tremendous, and uh, sure enough, she's really taken – you know, control of that position. She's enjoying herself. And, um, you know, she actually had a goal in the preseason as well. And, uh, you know, to finish off and to get that game clincher for us was fantastic. Outstanding. And, of course, uh, another freshman, another newcomer, uh, got the big uh, shutout, first one of her career for Annie yeah. Stevens. Uh, what does she bring to the, uh, to the net as far as her skill set? Well, i tell you what. Annie is a very technical goalkeeper. Um, she is also probably our best tactical goalkeeper. She studies the game. She's a very brilliant young woman. I've had the opportunity to train her since she was 11 years old. So we've got a lot of history there and I think that you know we can communicate on many different levels. But uh, I was very impressed with her confidence most importantly. Um, as a freshman I think and to play in some big games like that she came up clean. She's got brilliant hands and uh, you know, she, she saved us there at the at the very last minute. So uh, literally so. In that, your case, literally so. You so the girls and the uh, and the team are really uh, rallied around her, as well as the other two goalkeepers, uh, Michelle Damaris and Taylor Cornelius, that are uh, challenging for that position. Mm -hmm. And I think on any given day, either any of those girls can step up and play that position for us. Well, uh, a, a little bit of a new look for Bobcat soccer, uh, not only uh, new uniforms, which will be exciting and, and, and good to see this weekend, but uh, a lot of new faces as Absolutely. well. Uh, we're about 50-50, maybe even a little bit skewed toward newcomers mm -hmm. uh, for, for GC this year. Now, I know, I mean, this is an 11-person team. you got to have every cog working together, and, and I know that, that gelling element was a concern for you sure. early. we got to get it going early mm -hmm. in order to have success. How has that been with, you know, I believe it's, you know, 15 newcomers and, 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 and about 11 returners? Yeah, it's um, actually, <laughs> it's been fantastic. The girls did a little bit of team bonding before preseason even started on their own. Um, and so they really came together quickly. And I'll tell you what, this, uh, you know, we preach family in this program. And, uh, you know, they truly are day in and day out working for one another, having trust in one another and building that family atmosphere there. So uh, the gelling has been fantastic. And I think that's led to, you know, us playing well in the early part of the year. Uh, so we'll have to continue that. I think the to say our starting lineup changes a lot right now. I don't put a lot of stake in who's the starter. It's how we finish the game at the end of the day. And so um, but I would say that our starting lineup right now is uh, well represented by each class. So I think that's been a very nice balance out there. All right, well, let's look forward. The first chance for the Bobcat fans to check the team out at home right. this year coming up this weekend. Actually, tomorrow night, uh, Friday night at uh, 730 is the right. scheduled time. Uh, might uh, We have a game before us, so it might not come exactly at 730. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've got uh, three teams come to town for the annual Bobcat shootout. Nova Southeastern, you won't play. Correct. Uh, and then we've got uh, Winget, the Winget Bulldogs on Friday night. And then uh, coming into Sunday, we've got Tusculum. Uh, the pioneers. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, Winget and, and and what you know about those folks. Okay. Well, it's uh, again, it's very early in the season to get a lot of information mm -hmm. on these programs. So we're kind of going off information from last year. Um, Winget has traditionally been a very solid program, competes well within their conference. Uh, so we're expecting a good, a nice, strong battle that night. Uh, Tusculum as well. We had the opportunity to see him play twice, um, or I did this past weekend up at their tournament. Um, and again. Uh, 
that's a very nice program with some dangerous players in there. So I think we've got two really strong games on our hands this weekend. I'm hoping that the home field advantage helps out and uh, hopefully for a great atmosphere tomorrow night uh, for that game and home opener for this team. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough weekend for us. And I think if we can get two W's, that would be fantastic for the region um, sure. and put us into, you know, a good position there. Well, again, good historic programs, uh, particularly in, in Tusculum's sake. I know, I know they've won a lot of ball games in, in the recent history. Well, we wish you well on that. Thank and for you. Hope Clark, uh, this is Al Weston for the Bobcat Coaches Corner. Stick around. And now, another adventure with Savings Man. Look, honey, the neighbors just bought a big screen TV. Hey, I just got a bonus at work. Maybe we should get one, too. Hold on there. Savings Man. Using your bonus to secure your future by paying down debt or saving is a better way to go. Well, I declare you're right, Savings Man. Stay ahead by choosing to save. And don't worry about keeping up with the Joneses. But their name is Johnson. For more tips and tools, visit choosetosave.org today. Over half the people waiting for an organ transplant in the United States will die before they get one. You can increase your chances of getting a life-saving organ donation by joining Life Sharers. You get preferred access to the organs of other members. In return, you give fellow members first access to your organs. Membership is free and anyone can join. Join Life Sharers now. It's free and it could save your life. Hey, Bobcat fans, it's time for another Bobcat Coaches Corner. It's the first one of the fall with head tennis coach Steve Barsby. Steve, thanks for joining us uh, for the big show here today. Not a problem. Enjoy it. Love it. Now, now I said a little bit earlier that uh, the one with me and Hope was probably the, the most attractive panel <laughs> we were going to have today, and I thought you might have something to, to say uh, otherwise. What do you think? Well, I think Hope's got me a little bit. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's up to the fans to decide. We'll... We'll let, uh, see what Bobcat Nation says, but uh, of course we we got next weekend coming up uh, the the start of the fall season, your non championship season. But uh, what does the fall season mean for you overall? Why why do you play it, and what can you come out with? Uh, you mostly play it to see just your new players. Uh, sure. I, I I pretty much know what the uh, the guys who are returning are, are going to do for us. Uh, you play it for, there's a lot of individual things about uh, seven, eight years ago, 10 years ago, they took the individual portion out of the spring uh, championship season. We used to have a uh, team champion, then an individual tournament in the spring. So I guess to, to help out kids and, and, and to maybe make it like there was still an individual tournament, they moved it to the fall. So uh, you know, it's to see sort of individually what everyone has and, and leading into the spring. You know, but. And next weekend, you got the uh, the men's uh, tennis fall championships that we host each year, and and it, it, year in year out, it seems to be some of the best competition in Division Two tennis, and really just the, the entire Southeast that you pull into Milledgeville here. Yeah, uh, the the fall tournament, especially being in our being in the Peach Belt, where you know you're eighth in the Peach Belt and twentieth in the country. Uh, if we can get some of those teams to come in, it ends up being a real good tournament. And then once again this year, we have. Uh, Lander coming in, Columbus State, Augusta State, uh, ABAC, one of the top junior college programs in the country, and then we might have a couple smaller schools. But the field is usually real, real good, and uh, you know a lot of good players, a lot of all-conference players in the Peach Belt, and usually you know three to five All-Americans in the field. And that starts Friday, uh, typically runs into through to Sunday sometimes, right? Runs into Sunday, especially if we if we end up with eight to ten teams in it, or we run into weather like the U.S. Open is right now. So, oh, yeah. uh, but. Uh, yeah, it, Sunday Sunday morning is usually the finals. All right, so we'll get you out there at the Centennial Center Tennis Facility for the big uh, men's fall championship, and then uh, the rest of the uh, the fall season falls after that. We'll we'll tell you some more about that later. But let's take a look at the men's team. Uh, a lot of returners. Uh, you're only losing, I believe, two guys, and and replacing them with some some pretty good ones. Yeah, we're losing uh, Tobias Rausch, I guess as you say it, uh, who played number uh, three and four for us last year, did a very good job. Uh, and we lost Robert Angelucci, or Bobby as we call him, uh, you know, was, did some real good things for us in doubles last year and came in in singles when we needed him. Uh, both those guys have moved on. Uh, but we replaced him with a, a guy named Kasper Konyevs from uh, Sweden, who I think is going to compete at one of the top spots in our lineup and a, and a sensational doubles player. Uh, recruited him. Uh, I think he's going to be do well for us. Transfer from UNLV, so he's played some big time D1 tennis. Uh, just wasn't happy with, I guess, his whole environment out there. I guess 
Millersville is a little different than Vegas, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. So, but no, I think uh, the guys' team is going to be real solid to start. And of course, coming back, you got uh, Jerome LeBourne, Johan Wadstein, some of the guys that have typically played uh, in the top half for you in, in the last couple of years. Uh, you know, J Jerome's a great story too, in that he's already finished his undergrad degree, right? <laughs> Jerome's, Jerome's a smart guy. Uh, Jerome's done well, transferred in some hours from back in France, graduated in uh, three years, had a year of eligibility left. Uh, he, I asked him, I said, do you want to play your senior year? And he's like, yeah, sure. You know, he's a pretty laid back kind of guy. He's like, why not? <laughs> so uh, he, he's getting his master's, getting an MBA. And uh, so he'll finish that next summer. Uh, but uh, Doing all that, being all conference in our conference, and uh, with a 3.8, 3.9 GPA, whatever he has, is, is pretty impressive. And uh, Johan's playing well. Uh, he played real high last year, and hopefully he can do the same. Uh, he's come back working real hard. Um, so we'll see. Um, but uh, like I said, the, the fall will sort of flesh out to see if they've matured as players and, and competitors to see how they do against the top guys around the country. And like you said, that's what it's for. Yeah. All right, so uh, what about the women's side? Let's flip to that side. We were losing Bertie Leon, yeah. who was, uh, you know, I believe, a three-year starter for you. Yeah, three, three and a half. You yeah, know, her yeah. freshman year was in and out of the lineup uh, a little bit. So losing her is going to be tough. You know, she was our only senior, uh, played number one for us, was good not just, you know, results-wise, but in the van, traveling to things, keeping the girls relaxed, you know, letting them know sort of what it was about in our conference. Uh, adding adding a, another transfer from Drury up in Missouri, uh, Ivana Marovic. Uh, she's done real well. Uh, played against us last year when we were down in Pensacola. Actually, Mae Johnson and her had a great match down in Pensacola. So, uh, uh, and they've already become friends, so it's neat. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but no, I think uh, the girls, and we added Leah Pridgen, uh, a kid from Atlanta. Um, so I think we're going to be solid again. Uh, we're going to try to probably add one more player in January like we usually do. But uh, I think on paper today, our women's team's a little better than we were last year already. So but we'll see what happens. And just like the men's team, there's going to be some pretty good battle for, for the top half of that lineup and as far as who's going to be playing where, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, May, May had a great year playing uh, number two last year. Kay had a great year playing three. May beat Ivana down in Pensacola, but it was real close. So sure. we got three girls that I think are going to be the – uh, competing for the top, uh, Lisa, who played real well at number, I guess five last year. Um, her and her and Michelle at the bottom are going to be, a, and, and Lisa's got potential to s sneak up into the top two, three, maybe. Um, oh, she was a winner at that. Oh spot, yeah, you Lisa, know, I mean, Lisa so, can play. Lisa yeah. can play. Uh, Lisa had some shoulder issues. Uh, had a had a great record serving underhand the whole year. Uh, so, <laughs> you know. If she gets to ever gets to serve like a normal serve, it'll be interesting to see how good she can do. <laughs> sure. Uh, but, uh, no, I think there's going to be some real good battles within the team. And Leah looks like she's playing well so far, too. Outstanding. Okay. Well, uh, to talk a little bit about coaching tennis in general, it's a unique sport in, in that you have that individual aspect uh, when you get into the championship season. But, but each win counts for a team point, yeah. and the, the victories are for teams in, in the spring. So. Uh, how, how do you coach that element of, of trying to make sure that, that you do for you and also for the team as well? You try, to make it, you try to make everyone else important to the person. And we do that through conditioning when we're running the guys. And we really stress, you know, picking kids up and really, you know, outside of the tennis match. Because once we start a match, they're by themselves pretty much. Like they don't, they can see the other kids playing and me and Carlos – are going around to individual courts, and they can sort of see the scores, but there's really no interaction mm -hmm. between the players during a match. So we have to try to build that up throughout the week. So when they're on the court and it's four all, they're like, I can't let my teammates down. I can't let them down. Um, and we talk about five. That's all we talk about. We say, I don't care where the five wins come from. <laughs> we need five wins. You know, so someone go out and get one. And you know, and they'll all joke around. I'm going to get it. No, I'm going to get it. So. But uh, no, they do a good job. I think I think through our conditioning and the running and them picking each other up, uh, they get to the point where they really want to play for each other, and it helps that you're in a van that, that, that they're pretty much sitting in each other's laps sometimes <laughs> because they're cramped in with tennis gear and stuff. They they know each other pretty well, so yeah. Some years that's a good thing. Some years that's a bad thing. But uh, uh, but they the, over the course of the few years. I've been here and, and do her before me. I think the team has had a, a very good atmosphere amongst each other. 
And of course, those victories normally come at uh, the bottom half of the line. We, we talk about you know the, the competition you're going to have at yeah. the top half, but if you're good at that bottom half, then, then you're, you're going to win a lot of matches, aren't you? Yeah, and, that, and that's why last year we got to the point where I think our women's team outperformed their talent level because Michelle improved tremendously last mm. year and got a lot of wins at the bottom. Everyone's got a good number one. So you really, Michelle Lingner. You yeah, Michelle Lingner. Sure. Um, she played great last year. And everyone's got a good number one. So we're going to win some matches there. We're going to lose some. Uh, we were spoiled for a few years there where we had Eric on the guys and Julia with the girls. You know, you just rolled them out there and you knew they were going to win. Um, but uh, if you can get your four, five, and six to really win a bunch of matches, that's you're going to win. You're going to be ranked high and you're going to win a lot of matches. And that's, I think, the, our, been our success is we've had deep teams. You know, the sure. last few years we always haven't had the unbelievable one and two but we haven't dropped off much going down the line, so it's helped, you know, getting wins at the bottom. Like Lisa and Michelle, I think, were our two highest winners last year, and then Kay at three. So we're getting to the point where we're getting solid throughout the total lineup. But uh, but if you can get that four, five, and six, that's big, and three doubles. Oh, yeah, so. and almost, you know, kind of build from the bottom yeah. up, so yeah. to speak. But, uh, okay, well, we wish you well, Coach, and, and good luck getting things started here in the fall. We hope we, you're able to flesh out that lineup and, again, get on out to the uh, Centennial Center Tennis Facility. we got to come up with a better name for that. That's too, just too bulky. Yeah. Right? See if we can get some sponsorship on that, maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll try. Okay. We'll right. try. Well, anyway, get out there to the Centennial Center Tennis Facility and, and check out uh, Coach Barsby and the gang. Uh, once again, this is the Bobcat Coach's Corner uh, with Al Weston and Steve Barsby. Chevy Checker. A new twist in the law makes it easier than ever to save on your Medicare prescription drug plan costs. So what are you waiting for? Go to socialsecurity.gov and apply for extra help. It's easier than learning the twist. Why do people think there's more disagreement in the state legislature than in most families? My brother and I argue about everything, even which TV show to watch. Mom says our elected officials debate important issues every day, and they may argue too, but in the end they compromise, and that's how the best decisions are made. Sometimes it just takes a little give and take to find common ground. I guess it's the same in the state house as it is in my house. It's okay to argue, as long as you're willing to compromise. You know, like when you want to see the Jonas Brothers but your brother wants to watch SportsCenter, and you end up compromising, and watch the new PBS special with your parents. Am I missing something? Learn more about how compromise works by logging on to www.representativedemocracy.org. Hey, Bobcat Nation, it's time for another Bobcat Coach's Corner. This time we're going to talk some cross country with Stephen <laughs> Carey, uh, awesome. assistant coach for the program. Thanks for being with us, Steve. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, buddy. Uh, you got a unique background. Uh, of course, uh, you, you ran uh, a little bit further south here down at Valdosta State. Boo, boo, Valdosta yeah, State. Hey, but uh, hey, we appreciate hey, hey. You, you joining <laughs> the dark blazers. side up here. But uh, um, Talk to me a little bit about your career and, you know, I mean, wh where were you typically on the, the, the finishing list there for the Blazers? Um, I ran four years for Valdosta State Blazers, and I was, I was typically in the top five. Um, I had an up and down career, so I experienced, uh, I was a leader one year, and the next year I'd be fifth on the team. So we, we just had that kind of a team, kind of similar to the one we have here, actually. Okay. Um, a lot of competition, inter, inter squad competition, so it was, Good stuff. It was fun. It was All right. Fun. Well, and of course, you have unique uh, family ties to the Bobcats. Yes, Tell sir, us a little bit about that. Uh, my brother ran here for four years as well. Just He was a senior last year and just finished up, and so. I competed against you guys quite a bit. I came up here, ran the Bobcat Ramble okay. several times right, cool. uh, every year that Tim was here. So that was fun. I got to really get in uh, good with with Coach Samproni and and uh, Rich, and it was fun. All right, excellent. So we've got uh, we got Tim Carey, your, your brother, that just finished up, yes, and he's going to be finishing up his degree here in, yes, sir. in uh, he December time, I believe, right? Yes, sir. He graduates in December. Okay. What what program is he doing again? I forget. 
economics. Economics, okay. Yes, and then, uh, of course, you also have your sister-in-law that's that's on the women's squad right now. And yes, Emily, sir, right? I do. Yes, okay, sir. so all sorts of family ties to exactly. the, uh, the Bobcats, <laughs> and it fits in great. Um, okay, so let's look back a little bit. Uh, we just finished up the Bobcat Invitational, our home meet. Yes, sir. Uh, we like to start things at home because it's probably going to be about the toughest course they're going to run all year, isn't it? Oh, it'll be the toughest. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the schedule, it's definitely the toughest. Thing. Okay, uh, small meet. We don't uh, typically bring in too many teams because I know our shoot early is, is a little bit tight. Uh, yes, so you sir. can't fit too many teams in there. But, uh, you know, uh, tell me a little bit about the guys finish second. You got a good, strong finish from Tyler Maddox and Dan Horseman. Uh, Colin Conroy was up top there as well. I mean, how did you feel about the men's race? Well, I, I felt really, really um, strong about, about the team going into the meet. I think we all did. Um, we have a great team, a great group of guys. And our top four, like you said, uh, we've got Tyler, Dan, Colin, and Phillip. Solid top four. Um, a lot of inter squad competition there. Good thing about Tyler is, is, and Dan and Colin is they're all three seniors and they're focused. They're extremely focused. Never seen a group of guys this focused in my life. And, and Tyler is running his tail off. I mean, he's just definitely gets down and, and he's improving every day. So is Dan. Mm -hmm. um, one of the th cool things I think uh, about this past meet was. All of them ran faster than they did last year, even Dan. Uh, and yep. you, you look at Dan's progress last year, setting school records, it bodes well for the rest <laughs> of the season. I mean, it does. And, and Philip coming in as a sophomore, he has a year under his belt. Uh, we're looking for great things from him as well. He's, he's going to be a great runner. And now adjusting to the, the 8K distance, Philip's not going to have a problem. I'm, I'm really looking for, for positive things out of him. And he's really upbeat about the season. I think his sophomore year, there's definitely a maturity level. He's, he's oh yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, he's definitely in, improved there. So, I think we're gonna have a strong, strong men's team. Right now, it's the fifth runner that's that's kind of the key for us. Uh, we've got Rob, who is also a senior, and Travis, Travis Knight, uh, both seniors. Really, really trying to get something out of them. Sure. Um, and they're improving. They are improving, but we've got to bridge the gap between our fifth runner and, and Philip, our fourth runner right now. Yeah, the idea, of course, run like a pack, keep yes, all sir. those times low and, and mm -hmm. your slots low, and then your score is low, and exactly. up to the top of the standings you go, right? Exactly, and I, and I really think we're going to do well in the conference and region this year. Um, every meet we're, we're going to, we're, there's a reason, and a uh, rhyme and reason to, to go, and I really believe we're going to be able to compete well with Columbus State, Clayton State, um, Augusta even. Yep. The state, so. Yeah, those, those are typically the, the, the folks that, that are taking this conference, uh, the top three slots, and, and we've worked our way in there a couple of times, and, uh, and it looks to, to be doing some more of the same, uh, bar and everybody staying healthy. Let's uh, switch to the women's side, and it's, it's really more of the same. I mean, you got that pack style running of a bunch of nursing majors, and uh, <laughs> Allison Loans, and uh, yes, Carissa Ekstrom, and, and then uh, behind them is uh, Ashton Passano. So uh, how did you feel about that, uh, that first race for those guys? I thought it was very well. Once again, we kind of expected the pack. Um, I think even more so than the men uh, further back on the team. We, we've got seven or eight girls that could potentially be in the top five mm. any given week. Um, you have Allison, who is definitely a clear favorite on our team right now as far as a front runner goes. Um, but then after that, you've got Ashton, Carissa, Courtney. Um, you've got Victoria, Rebecca, a freshman. We've got a solid group of girls that really, even in practice, I mean, aren't even consistently a number two girl. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they, they switch off. So it's, it's exciting to see that. And, and I think that just the finish in the Bobcat Invitational just reinforced what we have on the girls' side. It, solid group of girls. And, and you look at their times, I mean, they were separated literally by seconds. Sure, sure. And, and so you got loans out there in front leading the pack. We have and loans then, then, out there, yes, And sir. then just a big wad of folks uh, coming in after that. Exactly. And, and I really think we're going to have a potential uh, you know, first team all conference, mm -hmm. um, maybe even first team all, all region with, with Allison if she, if she uh, continues to improve and stays healthy. That's the key. Sure. Uh, but also we have a slew of other runners that, that might be you know, second team all conference and maybe even first team if, if they really have a, a outstanding day. So a lot of potential there, a lot of potential. And I think right now we're ranked fifth, fifth or sixth um, in the conference. Mm -hmm. 
I really believe that by the end of the season, some teams are going to be surprised by, by what we have. Sure, sure. Yeah. Sounds like it. All right, well, let's look forward then to the weekend. Uh, we, we got a big trip uh, out to California. Yes, sir, a really long trip. <laughs> UC Irvine, I know uh, Joe likes to do these trips uh, a couple of times a year. He uses it as a recruiting tool to tell folks that, you know, hey, you're going to get to run in Boston and, yes, and Arizona and places like California. that. California. Yeah, so, so we're headed to UC Irvine, going to be yes, a largely D1 meet, I believe. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. They're going to run against some, some competition that they're probably not going to see the rest of the year. Uh, but it's going to be tough competition. Yeah, and I imagine you know you got to probably attack those style of meets as, as more of just worry about your times. Uh, yes, you sir. know, enjoy the trip. Uh, don't necessarily worry about that number that you finish in because we're we're running against some some tougher competition. Right, and and one thing about the trips is it's a little bit more laid back atmosphere. Mm. They're they're having a little bit of fun as well, so that's a good thing. And and right now we were looking at the weather last night uh, in California in in Irvine, California. It's 70s, nice. <laughs> perfect running weather. So, awesome. Awesome. so like you said, they're they're gonna be able to focus a little more on time, uh, not worry so much about their place in the race, their overall place, um, but focus just on them. And I think that's a key. Uh, once again, all the meets that we have do have a rhyme and reason. We are our main focus is conference and region, mm -hmm. and so this kind of fits in there uh, as well. Like okay. I said, they get to focus a little more on time and, and running fast. And that's what you want to do as a runner. It's fun to run fast. <laughs> indeed, indeed. All right, well, well tell me uh, who's going to be making the, the trip this weekend. Who's making the trip? All right, on the men's side, we have Dan and Colin, are, are two of our top three runners. Mm -hmm. um, we have Philip, also in our, in our top four. And then we also have Travis and Tucker. Okay, so Tucker uh, Tucker Forbes gonna gonna make the spot for uh, for Maddox, I guess, is not making he, the trip. He he is, okay. and so those five guys are solid, and I really expect big things from them this weekend. Um, on the women's side, we have Allison, Ashton, we have Carissa, uh, we have Rebecca, and then Andrea. Okay, so Andrea Burns. Burns, and, yes. And Re Rebecca's uh, the, the freshman, correct, that, that finished tops mm -hmm. for us uh, dur during the, the Bobcat invitation. Yes, sir. And, and one of the cool things, just a side note on Rebecca, is she came in, uh, she actually got lost during time trial um, the, the first week of practice, and, and we really didn't know where she was at. And the first week, I mean, she, she really, after that, so I guess it would be the second week, she really shined, and, and she's been improving consistently every practice every workout we have she's just getting better and better and better which is a good thing I mean it bodes well for future Bobcat teams as well so really really big things out of her and Re Re Rebecca Shane now uh, if I remember correctly she's one of the taller runners that we have she as is. well she's probably the tallest <laughs> is, is that is that a typical uh, you know a, a body style that you would want for a runner eh, it can be it can be uh, typically you have Shorter runners as well doing doing well at cross country. It's it's up and down terrain. Um, it's it's a little bit better center of gravity there. But taller runners, shorter runners. It's it, it really it comes down out to to work ethic and and just um, working working hard and trying to improve and getting the best out of what you have. Okay. Well, we're going to try and get the best out of what we have this weekend at UC Irvine. Stay tuned to uh, GCBobcats.com for the results. For Stephen Carey, Al Weston, for the Bobcat Coaches Corner.